Hey guys, it's Bryony, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm super excited because I'm doing my review on the Eye Candy Lime Lifestyle Push Chair. So back at the end of December last year, I did a video review on my egg push chair, which I bought some time ago and really liked, so I thought it'd be worth doing a review on. And I talked in that video about how I've really loved push chairs and trying them out and everything for quite a while now. And underneath that video, somebody asked me if I'd tried out the Eye Candy Lime. Now as it happened, I hadn't. The Lime is a relatively new push chair to the market. I think it was only released in 2019. And of course, we're in lockdown in the UK and have been for what feels like forever now. So none of the shops were open, so it wasn't like I could go and find somewhere to try it out to give some advice to this person. But I, after that video, also got a message through Instagram from somebody else asking me about the Eye Candy Lime. And I thought, wow, a lot of people wanna know about this Lime Push Chair. So I contacted Eye Candy and said, hey, look, I've got some people asking me about this obviously I can't go and test them out in the store would you possibly consider sending me one to review and they said yes so I've got a lot to cover in this review so I'm gonna get straight into it otherwise we're gonna be here for an hour but I did first of all want to say this is not a sponsored video I was sent the lime for free to review but I have not been paid to do this video this is my own personal opinion of what the push is like whether I think it's good or bad I'm gonna be talking about the pros to the push chair and things that I feel are cons. Now they may not be cons to you, but they're things I thought are worth mentioning and then you can kind of assess whether or not that's something that you need to be worried about because push chairs are designed for different lifestyles. So it may well fit into your lifestyle or it might not, but hopefully this review will help you make a decision on whether the eye candy lime is good for you or not. So first good point, the eye candy lime has a really compact fold. Now this is a sort of mid-size push chair, so it's not an ultra compact, it's not one of the smallest, but for a mid-size push chair, it does have a really compact Pack fold. I live in a block of flats, so I have a very small space to store my push chairs, and this line fits in there perfectly, it doesn't take up any room at all, uh, so that was something I was really impressed with. The other thing about its compact fold that I really like is that it self stands, so you don't have to lean it up against a wall. If you're out and about and you're folding it up, say because you're in a busy cafe or something, if the shops ever open again, <laughs> then you can easily fold it up and it will stand by itself. You don't need to be leaning it against anything, so that's a real pro too. The next good point is that the push chair feels really really sturdy. I've pushed this on several different terrains, I've really put it through its paces because I wanted to get a feel for how it worked and was it good or not. And the one thing I noticed is it does not feel flimsy at all. Considering this is supposed to be like a compact light push chair, it's not that light and I'll get into that later on. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised by how strong it felt. It feels really well made. There's no sort of flimsiness with the panel bar, there's no wiggle room. You li you're lifting up over and down, up and down a curve, you can sometimes feel that there's some give. There's obviously a little bit because every pusher has it, but it feels really strong and really sturdy. And you can tell that this is a pusher that is going to last. The other thing I really like about the Lime is that the seat unit can fold into its compact form with the foot muff on. I wasn't sure whether it'd be able to do this or whether you'd have to take the foot muff off or just leave the seat unit kind of open, but it can fold with the foot muff on and it still has its really compact fold and it's one of the things I felt was really great about this. Another thing I really like about the Eye Candy Lime is the elevators that come with it. Now these allow you to lift the seat up and either forwards or closer towards you and you can do it in parent facing view or world facing view. One thing I really noticed about these elevators, because I wasn't sure that I'd actually use them very much, but when I tried them out and with the seat in parent facing mode and moved it closer towards me, the handling of the pusher became even better. Now it handles fine anyway, it's, it's got very good steering, but when you take the weight off of the center and move it back a bit, the weight on the front wheels is lifted off, so then you can find it much easier to turn. Like I could really notice the difference in the handling when I did that, so well worth giving it a go if you do get the eye candy line. And the other thing that the elevators are really good for, which leads me into my next point, which I think is one of the biggest pros for people when they're considering this push chair, is the ride on board. So the elevators allow you to move the seat forwards and out the way of the built-in ride on board that the Eye Candy Lime has. Now this means if you have an older child, they can stand on the ride on board that's built in whilst you have another child, a younger child, in the seat unit in front. Now that seat unit can either parent face so that you can have your kids facing each other, or it can world face as well if you don't want them arguing, or if you're just having a day where you're like, Do you know what? Just separation is the thing. That built-in ride on board means that the push chair can kind of go from a single to a double, although it cannot hold a second seat unit. It can only have one seat unit on it, plus a child on the ride on board if you wish to. If you want a single to double push chair with the ride on board built in, you need to go and look at the Eye Candy Orange, which is like the big sister to the Eye Candy Lime. That one does go into a double unit, but it doesn't have as compact a fold and it's a heavier push chair. The next plus is the basket space. It is 
huge. It can hold 10 kilos in it and it's really easy to access underneath the pushchair. I actually worried that I would have things falling out of the pushchair because it's quite open at the back, but actually I found that that wasn't an issue at all. Nothing ever fell out of this, even going up and down curbs. And particularly in lockdown, it was really useful having this because I wanted to avoid going to the big supermarket, which I would usually do in the car. I just tended to do one shop a week down the road at our little supermarket and I would just fill up the basket with our midweek shop and come back and it was brilliant at doing that. So basket space, definite plus. It also has a pretty easy to use harness. I wouldn't say it's the easiest on the market out there, but it wasn't a problem to use. It wasn't fiddly, very easy to click the different pieces in and also to release by pressing the center button. They just pop out straight away. So that was really good. The Lime has a really good size hood as well. It has an extra layer that you can unzip to make it even bigger. And it has like a little flap sun visor that pops out and can pop away again. And it also has a peekaboo window on the back, which is something that I'm personally not so worried about, but I know a lot of people do like to have. The seat has three different recline positions in both forward and parent facing mode. So it has sort of an upright position, a slightly more reclined position and a very reclined position. And the most reclined position is really flat. So if you are worried about children sleeping in the pushchair, you're not gonna have a problem with the line. It goes really, really flat. The footrest is also adjustable, has a number of positions, so it can go tucked away underneath or you can raise it up if you have a child who's a little bit younger and you want their legs to be kept up. One of my favorite features of the Lime lifestyle is the pocket that's on the back of the seat unit. It's really practical. It has a really big pocket on the back, which I actually use to store the rain cover in so it didn't take up any basket space. And there's also a pocket on the front that you can store various things in. And there's a zipper hidden away behind the main pocket, which you can use to help adjust the straps on the actual seat unit. Another pro with the Lime is that the carry cot is approved for permanent overnight sleeping. So if you wanted to, you don't need to buy a separate Moses basket. If space is an issue, in your house and you're trying to be space saving or minimalistic, you can use that for permanent overnight sleeping. Although bear in mind that iCandy don't currently sell a stand for the pushchair and they don't recommend that you use a generic one. So you would have to use it on the floor. Personally, I'd be more like to use it for holidays and trips out where you know that you have the carry cot, which is a proof overnight sleeping. So whilst you're away for a few days, you don't need to worry about taking a separate travel cot or a pop-up Moses basket or anything like that. You've already got it there and you know it's safe for your little one to sleep in. And finally, the big biggest pro probably to the eye candy lime lifestyle is that it comes with literally everything. So in the package you get the chassis, the seat frame, because the carry cot and the seat fabrics both go onto the same frame, that's the space saving part. That's what the Lime Lifestyle is about, it's about space saving for you. So with eye candy, most of their models, the seat fabric and the carry cot fabric go onto the same frame and that makes it much easier to store, you'd have to store a whole second carry cot. So you get the seat frame, you get the carry cot fabrics, you get the seat unit fabrics, you get a foot muff, you get a rain cover, you get the elevators, you get the car seat adapters, and you also get a changing bag. So basically, you get everything included in the price, which at the moment is £750. So moving on to the things that I didn't like so much about the eye candy lime. Like I said at the beginning of the video, they might not be cons for you, but they were for me. And it's just useful to mention them so that you can say, actually, that's not gonna bug me. This is the push chair for me. Or actually those things would annoy me too. This isn't right for us. So the first con to the eye candy lime is actually a slight design flaw. Basically when you fold the seat unit with the foot muff attached and then you open it up again, the bottom of the seat unit undoes the front popper of the basket. So every time you open it up, the popper just sort of pings off and you have to reattach it on. Now, it's a small design flaw because it's very easily fixed. The way that the eye candy lime has its basket attached is the poppers go from the outside inwards, but if it was just reversed so that the poppers went from the inside out and popped that way around, then this issue would be solved very quickly. Now it only happens when you have the foot muff attached to the seat unit. When you've just got the seat unit folded up, it doesn't do this for some reason. But it's just something I thought was worth mentioning because we live in, I live in England, there's a significant part of the year where you're gonna need a foot muff attached and it's just something that's a little bit annoying. The next thing that's not really so much a con as something just worth mentioning is this pushchair is not light. In fact, it's pretty heavy. It does come with a strap that you can use to lift it over your shoulder, but you will not wanna be carrying this any sort of distance, like a little, literally a short distance to the car or somewhere you're going to put it down is more than enough. It is 
it does weigh. My third thing I disliked about the Lime Lifestyle was actually to do with the changing bag. It's not very good. There's no pockets on the side. It does have the option to be either a backpack or to use a long strap over your shoulder. However, when you have it in backpack mode, you lose one of the zipper pockets along the back and there's only one other zipper pocket on the front. There's no pockets that are zippered on the inside. There's no insulated pocket for a baby bottle, which for me is an absolute must with a changing bag. The, it does come with a changing mat, but the pouch that the changing mat's stored in is really big and it kind of gapes into the middle of the bag. And there's only like two mesh pockets on the side. There's very little like storage options. So it looks very stylish as a, as a changing bag, but it's just not practical enough. And unfortunately with children, you do still need a mat a certain amount of practicality, which this bag just doesn't have. They have just launched a new backpack, I think, with the eye candy orange, which I really wish they did with the lime as well, because then that would have been brilliant. But the current bag that they send with the lime, which also has the peach label on it, for some reason, it's just not really up to scratch, in my personal opinion. Something else worth mentioning is that the bumper bar is pretty stiff, so it's almost impossible to do with one hand. I had one or two occasions where I had a little one on my hip and I was trying to undo the bumper bar in order to put them in and I couldn't do it so I kind of had to thread them through that. So you have to remember to undo the bumper bar before you pick your little one up to put them in the push chair. Once or twice I did manage to do it but it is a bit on the stiff side. And the final few things I'm gonna mention are about the seat unit. So the first thing is that the seat unit is slightly on the smaller side. It's actually not as small as I thought it might be. I had seen comments from people worried about the seat unit. It is a bit smaller but it's not as small as I thought it might be. I think you will comfortably fit a child up to age two in there. Some people might rule that out because they want to use the pusher up to age three, but to be honest with you, from a realistic perspective, once I've got a two-year-old, they're going to be in a lightweight compact pusher anyway, like an umbrella stroller or just one that folds more compactly and could be very easily thrown in the car. By the time the children get more mobile and they're getting in and out of the pushchair, it's just so much more practical to have something like that because it's just, it, it saves you on weight, not as much to lug in and out of the car, so you will inevitably get a lighter weight pushchair. So for me, I wouldn't rule out the pushchair just on this um, particular fact, but it's worth mentioning. Something else that's worth mentioning about the seat unit is it cannot go from birth. The seat unit is designed to be used from six months plus and the carry cot is designed to be used before then. Now, for some people, that's not a con at all. They very much intend to use the carry cot as long as possible before moving into the seat unit. But the thing that I thought was worth mentioning here is that the carry cot doesn't fold up into a more compact form to put in the car. So when you have a little one and you're, if you've got a smaller car, you'll be using the chassis, but you'll also need to put the carry cot in there. With a more mid-sized compact push chair, a large number of them actually do have seats that go from birth, but also have the option for a carry cot, whereas this one doesn't. And my final thing that I didn't like so much about the eye candy lime, although which actually wasn't as big a deal as I thought it might be, is that the seat unit can only fold in the forward facing position, it can't fold in the parent facing position as well. I thought this was gonna be a much bigger deal than it actually was. That's mainly due to the fact that the eye candy lime has memory buttons on the side, which allow you to flip the seat round. So you can turn the seat around super quickly. It's literally like a flick of your fingers, quick switch round, push the seat down. I thought it was gonna be a real bore to continuously do that, particularly because I was mainly using the pushchair in the parent facing mode. But actually it was it barely took any extra time at all and it was something I found didn't bother me. So definitely don't rule out the pushchair just based on that fact. It really doesn't take much to flip the pushchair seat round. And also in parent facing mode, once your children get a bit more adventurous, they start looking around a lot more, you're probably gonna to wanna to put them forward facing anyway. So people don't tend to use that parent facing seat for that long a period. Definitely not worth ruling it out on that, but something I wanted to mention. But I also wanted to mention it because, like I said, it wasn't as much of an issue as I thought it might be because the eye candy lime has such a good mechanism for towing the seat from forward to backwards and vice versa. So those are all the points I wanted to make. After talking about all that, would I recommend the push chair? Definitely yes. Like I said before, it feels very well built and like it's gonna last, and it does have a pretty compact fold, and given the the weight, as I said, it is a bit heavier, but like I said before, you've got a really strong well built push chair for that, and that's kind of the trade-off that you have to make. The fact that you get everything in one package, I think is really great. I mean, you look at other brands and how much they charge for those little extras, that can easily add up to around 200 pounds or so. So I think for the 750 price, for such a well built push chair that's really strong and it's gonna last you, and the, the fabrics feel great as well, you feel really confident this push chair is gonna stand the test of time. I definitely do think it is worth looking at and worth buying if you think it's something that's gonna work for your particular lifestyle. 
detail. Very much I think it's for people who have limited space or who don't want big push chairs. You've got a slightly smaller car, definitely worth considering as well. I think the word I would use to sum up the eye candy line would be practical. The big basket space, the built-in ride on board, the seat unit that could be parrot facing and forward facing and folds compactly, the overnight approved carry cot, all those features included just make it a really practical push chair that's well worth considering. Now if you've watched this video and decided that you would like the eye candy line lifestyle, amazingly eye candy have actually given you guys a 10% off coupon code which I will put in the down bar below now it only lasts for a week from the day that this video goes live so if you want it you're gonna have to use it within that week after that it will have expired so I will not put it in the actual video I'm gonna type it down below and give you the date that it expires so if you have watched this video and you're looking down and you can't see one it's because unfortunately you've watched it too late and that discount code is no longer available but for those of you that watch it in time if you are considering getting an eye candy lime do check it out but I really hope so I really hope you enjoyed this video guys and I hope it was helpful for those of you trying to make a decision on which push chair to get. If you would like me to review any other push chairs, maybe other, any other eye candies or other brands, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to check it out and see what I can do. Thanks so much for watching guys, do please subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye everyone!